And by the way, my name is Ala Bakar. Say yes if you already know my name. You don't know my name yet. Say yes if you already know my name. Oops, but I don't know yours. And don't worry, I'm not going to ask each one of you to tell me about your name. Instead, I will ask you another question that will help me to know you better. Say yes if you'd like to know the question. All right, the question is, I'd like to know what is your favorite food? Anyone can share with me? Wait, one by one, pizza, who else? One by one, raise your hand. Fried chicken, nasi goreng, okay. <laughs> what else? Kapsa chicken, wow. Come on guys, hurry up. What? Spaghetti, no nasi lima. <laughs> All right, say yes if you'd like to know my favorite food. Ladies and gentlemen, my favorite food is pizza. I love to eat pizza. Every different flavor that you give me, I'm going to eat it. Whether it's chicken, beef, or even an empty pizza, I will just eat it. And guess what? I'm going to eat it alone. Anybody in this room love to hear a story? All right. I'm going to share with you a story that might surprise you. In 1991, my mom became pregnant. And in July 6, I was born. And when I opened my eyes, I panicked because I found myself joining a two wives family. So I remember growing up, the relationship between me and my father wasn't that good because he only wants me to become a doctor, which is I really hate to say yes if you agree with me. All right, because I can't see someone like bleeding, ew. So what I did is I wanted to be who I am because I feel like I'm unique and I believe that everybody in this, in this room are unique. Say yes if you agree with me. Yeah. All right. So growing up, I had so many miscommunication and issues with my father and until I started to realize that I'm actually hating myself and even hating my family and even my parents. So I don't blame anyone for that. But at least that's what I had in mind that time. So back in 2010, my dad decided to send me to Malaysia to continue my studies. And I was like, whoa, yes, that's what I want. I wanted to run away from my family. That was my goal in that time, not now. So when I came here to Malaysia, I had this thought that if I change my place, I will be able to change myself. And that thought was wrong. Say yes if you agree with me. So when I came here, I was doing everything possible to do anything to make my dad accept me because I always be rejected by him. And one of the best examples that I have done is actually I was trying go to going to the mosque every day to pray. And I thought that if I told my dad about this, he would be happy and then he will accept me. And that was wrong. So I'm not saying that I don't pray today at the mosque. Instead, I go to the mosque and I pray for myself. And here is a thing that I believe in my life, that everyone on us have their own circle. Everybody in this room have their own circle. And what I see right now is in front of me, there are a bunch of circles who are actually sitting and listening to me. And thank you for listening. So. What is your circle? It's actually all up to you. So I had this circle where I ever have any friends, I will push so hard to make them accept me and to see them like, wow, this is the best guy that we ever have done before. So I'll push so hard and then these people will look at me like, what's wrong with this guy? Why is he acting out too much to please people? So what happened is I get rejected and then eventually I'll feel lonely and I'll feel depressed. And I keep repeating the same circle day after day. Until 2012, when the war has begun in my country, Syria, a lot of people start to come to Malaysia as refugees. And I thought that if I join this any NGOs or maybe a society clubs to help these people, it could be a good idea to help myself up 
that's what I thought. And then when I joined an NGOs, and I started as a normal volunteer, I started to appreciate myself and who I am. But that's still not enough to make me who I am today. So only four years later, I created my own a new circle, what I actually belong to, but I found it to have the first pattern, which is I created my own project, and I name it Give and Go. In Give and Go, we believe that volunteering, it could be the way that you like. Say yes if you agree with me. Yeah. All right. And also in Give and Go, we believe that everybody helped, everybody deserves to be helped, despite their religion, their background, or where they come from. And here is when I started to have my own circle that I belong to, which is I have friends, and then I will act normal as who I am, and eventually I'll be accepted, and at the end of the day, I will be happy. And that's what I was looking for. So now, I'm going to share with you uh, two videos, and I want you to realize the difference between these two different uh, videos. Because this was the first project that we have done, and one of the latest projects that we have done in Give and Go. I want you to realize the video quality, the design logo, the t-shirt uniform, and so many things else that you can notice. Let's go for it. Oh, thank you. So that was back, uh, we call this project Arab Iftar Buffet. We have done it last year, and we're doing it this coming Ramadan as well, where we actually found that the issue with the refugees are not allowed to work, so we want to help them to generate an income. So we asked the families to cook the food, we bought it from them, and we sold it to the public as an open buffet. And we have created like another programs where actually we reach to be a become a creative and creating programs especially for charity area and one of the things that I'm going to tell you about but I'd like to ask you a question before that what what is the first thing that heard in your mind or comes to your mind when you hear the word of refugees what is it, the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the, f the word refugees not from Malaysia jobless they were forced to leave their country and come over here right and that's what exactly we had and now we are aiming to change the concept of this word in the world and at least in Malaysia so that's why we have created the first refugee show in Southeast Asia and we name it by refugees got talent so as you see thank you In this program, we are offering, offering an opportunities for those refugees who are actually talented and who, who wanted to show their talent to the world and they believe in themselves. We want to bring them up so everybody can think about refugees in different area. And not only that, we are offering a prize of 5,000 ringgit cash to the first winner. And here is a picture of the audition which being held last week and a group of students are actually so excited to go and perform in front of the judges and they get more excited to go to the final stage. And now I'm done with my story, but I want you to realize the difference between me in the previous circle and me now in the circle that I've created on my own. And that's a question that I wanna ask you, what is your circle? And before I go through, I'd like to bring you to my imagination world. I want you to imagine if you alone were sitting in this airplane and I told you that you will be flying from KL to Dubai and after the plane took off in the middle of your way going to Dubai you've heard the announcement telling you your destination has been changed you're no longer going to Dubai what would be the first question that you're going to ask about exactly you guys are amazing where am I going to and here is a question that I want to ask you guys where are you going in your life? Are you going to KL or are you flying to Dubai? And if you're going to Dubai, what makes you go to Dubai? Here is a question that I wanna ask you again. What is your why? Why are you going to Dubai? Or maybe you're just flying to nowhere. And if you wanted to answer this question and if you want to figure out your why, it's not easy to do because it might take you days, 
months and years and here is a thing if you would like to figure out your, your why you have to know what is your how say yes if you'd like to know my why all right brothers and sisters my why is I love to help people so here when I figure out my why it's become much easier for me to know what is my how so I love to help people I do charity projects I, I share my experience to people and I smile at people's faces and many so many things so you see how easy it is because I believe that in life we have two different lifeline I want you to imagine this is the lifeline and at the end of it there will be death so when you take the first step you find an opportunity and there is failure in it so you'll be afraid and you skip it and you go to the next step you find another opportunity you see another failure with it you skip it and then you die so when you look back you have done nothing but let's say you want to take the second lifeline where you actually step up and you take the first opportunity although you fail with it and you acknowledge your mistakes you learn from it and then you go to the next step where you actually have opportunity you succeed with it and then you die and if you look back you'll find yourself doing so amazing things in your life because I believe that these two life circles oh sorry these two lifelines it has two life circles so it depends on you which one do you like to take the first lifeline it has this circle where you actually have no action at all you will never do anything any new opportunity that comes to your mind and then later you have no experience because you haven't taken anything back and that will lead you to have no ability to try new things and eventually you will end up having more fear but let's say if you decided to take the another lifeline where you actually do action any opportunity comes to your way I take it I take it I take it I don't care whether I fail with it or not and then you will have more experience and that more experience will lead you to have more ability I'll give you the courage to try new things and at the end of the day you will end up having a confidence and sharing to people your mistake on the stage and finally I'd like to tell you something my point is if you guys want to find your why you need to help other people and if you want to help other people you need to help yourself up first before you start thinking about other people and today when we ever add a new Facebook page in our page my dad will be the first person who will like and comment and say good job I'm proud of you son thank you